But we were there a couple more weeks and he actually was in a coma for nine days. Um, he woke up after the ninth day and they operated on his femur bone. He had a broken femur bone and so they, they did that and his, he didn't have any more swelling on his brain so they said that was good. He didn't have to have any surgeries, you know, for that. And um, he was doing real well as far as that goes. But they really didn't give us any hope. They told us when he woke up, and he did, that he would not know maybe who we were or even who he was. Um, and he could have severe disabilities. With his injury that he had from the accident, they rolled several times. And so he had a, um, his brain was just sheared back and forth. So he had several bleedings to his brain. And I can just remember just holding on to my faith that um, through God, he can heal Colin and all things are possible. And um, so we held on to that. We had family friends come to the hospital and we had a group of men that prayed over oil, you know, because it says in the Bible to anoint with oil and pray for healing. And, um, and they did that, you know, they, they put it on his head and prayed for him. And um, he still didn't have many, he, he would not respond to us at all. He would just lay there in the bed and, and just pretty much stare at us. And that went on for several, two, three weeks. And, um, you know, that was hard because we didn't know if Colin would ever come to or if he'd ever be the same again. Um, the gentleman that I told you had brought my card, brought his card to me you know, the second day that we were there, he came and he shared with me a little more. He, that was not his hospital that he worked out at, but he was transferred to that hospital about a month or two before Colin's accident. I, I believe his, his home was in North Carolina and um, he was transferred to that hospital in Memphis and he did not know why, you know, he was transferred there. But then when he got the call from Pastor Story, about us being there, he knew right away the Lord had placed him there to help us as far as with the medical part of, you know, the patient's accounts and, and all that. Um, and he told us, you know, he feels like the Lord has him there to help us. And um, that was such, at that moment, you know, even though we were discouraged about calling, the Lord was still showing himself faithful to us. Um, so we held on to that that part um, but we were there for four weeks and Colin was starting to he was on a ventilator um, he had a feeding tube um, so you know that was hard um, he lost down to about a hundred and twenty pounds I would say and before the wreck he weighed about 160 you know so he had lost a lot of weight and um, he just had no response you know he was not responding to us um, we had a family friend call us and she said she wanted to come see us she had worked in a rehab in Lebanon um, near our hometown and she wanted to come see if she could um, you know just help us get him moved because they were just gonna leave him there in Memphis at a rehab there and you know our desire was to get him closer to home because we had been living out of a motel room for four weeks and um, we was ready to get him home and you know to for the healing to begin and um, so she came and um, and they had evaluated Colin and on the scale from one to ten for a brain injury he was a two he was that bad um, and we wanted him to go to Vanderbilt Stallworth and they would not accept him because he had to be a three and so since he was a two, um, we didn't know what we were gonna do. You know, we were pretty much against the wall. Um, but the Lord opened the door for this family friend to come and she called the hospital in our hometown, Sumner Regional, and uh, they had a rehab center there. And so she called and um, they, they were, wanted to take Colin. You know, they wanted to help us. and. Um, so then we thought, okay, well, how are we going to get him moved, you know, from Memphis to Gallatin? And um, another family friend um, 
that has connections with EMS and um, emergency management came to us and he said, I want to go get Colin, you know, and, and so they loaded up the ambulance and uh, we got permission, you know, we got it all cleared with Sumner accepting him. And um, so they brought the ambulance up to Memphis and to that point, we were just, um, just ready for a change for Colin. Um, it was just hard to see him just laying in the bed and not responding. And um, we weren't gonna give up on him. And, um, and I know the Lord, you know, was just comforting us during that time. Um, he was working everything out for us. That's right. He was working, even the move to Sumner, you know, he was working, working it out for us. Um, so he, he said he would be there the next morning, actually, after we got everything, all the paperwork together. And um, matter of fact, it was three or four family friends and some church members that had connections with EMS that came and rode up in the ambulance to, to come get Colin. And um, they transported him to Sumner. And when he arrived at Sumner, um, you know, we were, excited to be home um, and we were hoping that would just help him, you know, to come back to us. And um, the first couple of weeks were slow because he was still in the bed, you know, and they started, the rehab uh, group was just amazing. They, um, they were Christians and they wanted to see, you know, Colin um, start progressing. And um, so they started, um, just getting him up out of the bed, sitting him on the side of the bed, and um, he still, it was painful for him to even move. I mean, with a brain injury, he, his arms were stiff and his legs were stiff, and you know, it's all that he could do was just to move would hurt, you know, would hurt him. And um, so we slowly saw progress, and we just kept the faith that, you know, that we only knew that would get us through that at the time. But he was released from the hospital in December. It was the second week in December. And I can remember, you know, just bringing him home and he was just, he was so glad to be home. You know, you could tell. Um, we had days of, it was still hard, you know, because he needed care um, and, and it was hard and he still needed rehab that we was gonna take him to outpatient rehab um, but the Lord provided again then he provided a friend of Collins um, John he he took him to rehab um, every time we needed him to matter of fact he was a college student at the time and he he said he was not he was gonna just stop going at the time to get Colin back on his feet and he did he, he postponed his college classes for that time period and took him for us so we could go back to work because we had missed a lot of work. And um, my dad was there to take him. Um, so we were blessed that, um, you know, that God provided all of that. And it, and it was by his hand that he, he just worked everything out along the way. Um, but we just saw little things along the way that just encouraged us to know, to keep the faith and just keep strong. And I cannot imagine going through the traumatic um, experience that we had without God. Um, I don't, I, you know, that's the only way we could have gotten through it. The gentleman that was over the patient's accounts, he was there and of course he was living at a motel himself because he was just transferred to that hospital. Um, about six months after Colin left the hospital and was transferred to Sumner, he got a phone call that he could return back home to his his home hospital in North Carolina. So, you know, that to me was just a God thing that, um, that he worked out all of that for us. He's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. But Colin, the Lord is still healing him. He has, um, he actually went back to work part-time seven months later after the accident. He went back to work at Lowe's part-time, and that was a blessing. He started to drive a month after that, and that was um, a, that was scary because, you know, here we're, 
I kept saying, Colin, do you know how to get back home? Or, you know, I just had those questions, you know, because of the brain injury. And, um, you know, he, he started, he was fine, you know. <laughs> and he was almost just like he was getting back to himself. Um, but even, you know, he worked part-time for about a year, didn't he? And then, you know, and, and the Lord just still was healing him, even the part-time, because he was tired. You know, he, he couldn't work full-time at the time. But, um, but three months ago, the Lord has provided a full-time job for him. He is working um, full-time in landscaping, and it's just amazing to see how he has healed him. And he hasn't forgotten anybody. He, uh, his memory I, is, is great. It, I think it's better than mine. But, <laughs> but um, God is good, and I, I, there's a verse that's just so dear to me, and it says, pure gold put in the fire comes out of it, proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out pure genuine. It's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. 1 Peter 1, 6. And to me, you know, faith is, um, is all you can hold on to when when the world is saying, no, you know, this is how it looks like it's going to be, but that's right, no hope, but with God, there was hope, and he led us through. I just kind of feel like right now that God saved me from that accident just to tell people about it. And uh, when I worked at Lowe's, I told a lot of people about it, and I had people crying all the time when I would tell them about it, and they would see how good I'm doing now, and uh, they really couldn't believe it. I know I did. <laughs>